Good evening, everybody. All right. We're still in this kind of, uh, let's say, lethargic trend, which is not detrimental if you're trading off the candlestick signals and patterns. As we can see, the Dow is still in this slow drift, having a little bit of difficulty getting through the resistance level, but as long as it stays above the T-line, we just have to assume there isn't any major bearish sentiment in this market. The other index, the NASDAQ, you can see has been hitting all-time highs consistently. So essentially, it's pretty much telling us there isn't any real major uh, bearish sentiment that people are continuing to buy. Is this the Santa Claus rally? It might not be a rally of any great urgency, but it's still... Uh, uh, I got it on. It's a red and white one with the, the little white fluffy ball on the top. So, uh, anyways, even though the Dow is trading lower, the Nasdaq trading higher, pretty much tells us there isn't any major change of investor sentiment. The transportation index also holding up well. Again, we're just kind of drifting higher, which allows us to take advantage of the top rank signals and patterns that we're all aware of. So let's start. Well, first, let's take a look at some of the uh, in commodities. We can see what's going on with crude oil. It's now trading at 45.66. Remember, it wasn't too many months ago, they were paying, you had to pay for somebody to take your crude oil because there wasn't any place to put it. Now we're back to uh, almost $46 a barrel, which will be making a lot of the oil stocks uh, looking good. Gold is moving up. Let me see where... Gold is, uh, oh, did you have a strong day today? Gold and then looks like silver had a fairly strong day today. Trading up after hours. All right, so here's what I mean by taking advantage of the top rank signals and patterns. Notice the best friend signal on Simu that we recommended last week. Can the two plus two analysis, a fry pan bottom breakout through the 200 with a best friend signal. And what do we expect coming out of that fry pan bottom? A very strong price move. What do we expect? from a best friend signal, a good strong price move. So that's basically putting the two plus two analysis together. And we're seeing a lot of patterns like the J hook pattern, as we see in space, space had a big move today coming off this J hook pattern and started buying back blink today. J hook pattern. There's your classic pattern. Fry pan bottom, strong price move, pull back, and then the buying starts again. And look where it started buying again, right up, uh, right here at the T line. So if this ran from 10 to 35, 25 points, there's a good possibility this could hit the $50 area. Now, again, that's the projection. Is it going to get there? Don't know, but here's the things that we have going for us. One, we know a J hook pattern, classic pattern, usually implies more upside. Where's our first potential target? Right up here. That's still a good percentage move from this level. And if it breaks out through there, then there is the potential of that next, next up move. So 
we're definitely looking for the potential because that's where we want to have our money is the trade that we know the probabilities and the potential are very strong that's just putting us in situations where we know everything is in our favor now we'll go up to the fifty dollar range who knows we know that our analysis at this point is we should be in an uptrend but we wait to see where the next sell signal occurs that was blink this is very basically the same pattern fry pan bottom J hook pattern and this is why the T line is so uh, uh, so effective for at analyzing our patterns because you can see when they started taking profits back to this level what happened right here at the t-line the buyers were stepping back in not because they were buying at the t-line because nobody has the t-line on their chart it's just where the natural support uh, starts occurring so this all boils down to we're essentially being able to analyze the pattern and the indicators that it tell us that we have a higher probability of things happening at the appropriate time um, giving us the potential of a J-hook uh, pattern. So with that, uh, here's others. Jemiah, I'd be buying this one on anything above today's open. Now, uh, Billy, J-hook pattern right off the T-line. So these are all things that put the probabilities greatly in your favor because you can see the pattern and you can see what the support level was, the T-line. So look at, uh, and this is where your the analysis is nothing more than which direction is the trend you can see the trend is up and they haven't been able to close below the t-line you just assume that that uptrend remains in progress did I what one was that that was BTX MRNA kind of the same scenario big fry pan bottom J hook pattern pull back another J hook pattern all we're really doing is identifying what human nature does time after time and allows us to be in the positions that are going to have much greater probabilities of, of working and not only working in the sense that the slow uptrend is going to probably produce a lot of uptrending stocks they may not be very fast uptrends so what we can do is take advantage of the patterns knowing what their potential second move will be especially coming out of a, a J-hook pattern, that we're in situations that have a much greater uh, probability of, of moving higher with much greater speed. And here's something that I want everybody to remember. We put out recommendations that if it opens higher, and usually their right, the buy recommendations are going to be somewhere right in here, because that would imply the bulls are still there. But when you see something gap up like this, and it starts trading off, you don't get back in it until you see the buying starts. So just because you see your recommendation and this is why I like everybody to learn what should happen to confirm a buy signal a buy signal is seeing positive trading and continued buying I'd rather see it open here and start trading up because if it opens up here and starts trading down what's that telling us people are still selling or taking profits and so it's not a good time to be buying we saw the same scenario today on GSX 
where they announced that I guess they did complete an offering and it gapped up. It was trading up 10 points at one time. And then they started selling it off. Now, the reason I point this out is today's information about them uh, uh, putting out a new stock offering or completing a new stock offering was not anything that changed investor sentiment. All it did was temporarily change supply and demand. So the fact that they took it up and then started selling it off still indicates that this downtrending bias may still be in effect. So we had puts on this. And to our great surprise, it did this today. However, when it closed down here, well below where it opened, it still gave us the impression that the sellers are still in control. So we're still holding on to those puts or put spreads. Groupon, you can see the pattern. Fry fan bottom J hook pattern. Didn't do a good day today. And a lot of people, will, if they bought it on positive trading day, say, no, should we get out of this? No, because we still have the pattern. And what do we want to do at this point with this pattern? Probably don't want to close it out as long as it's an uptrend and still above the T-line. This is what got rid of a lot of my ulcers, is knowing that things bobble around in a trend. But as long as the trend doesn't break that T-line, you know the probabilities are pretty strong that you're heading in up, still in an uptrend. So you've got the advantage of knowing what's happening in a sector. Blink was acting well. Solo, another one. Fry pan bottom, exuberant buying, a pullback, now a left-right combo. This gives you the probabilities of maybe this is a wave three about ready to start. So this gives you a lot of people I've, I've trained in the past or uh, discussed their trading in the past say, I'm just so afraid to buy. What if it opens positive and goes the other way? That's what I'm afraid of. Well, the answer to that is that's exactly what could happen. But you're buying something like this on positive trading because of the expectation of the next wave. So even before you start, you're already mentally should be prepared to say, all right, if this opens positive, it should be going in this direction. If it opens positive and starts moving up here, where do I want to get back out? I don't want to see it close back below the T-line. Could it open here? Go up a little bit and trade off? Yes, but that's not the probabilities. The probabilities are it should be heading higher. So if you are gun shy and say, well, shoot, I'm looking at this and I know the probabilities are in my favor, but I'm afraid to buy, then you're just like kissing your sister. You're not going to get anywhere. Um, you're buying based upon the expectation that you uh, should be moving higher, and then you already know what your game plan is. But if it closed back down here, you close, close the trade. That should get rid of the fear factor of entering a trade, knowing what it should do and when you should be right back out. Now, if you also are aware that probably approximately 30% of your trades aren't going to work, that takes the solo, I think, uh, I think solo, doesn't it make a, I'm not sure, I thought it made a small electric vehicle. Yeah, kind of a little uh, delivery type truck. Or, yeah, three-wheeler, okay. All right, so... Here's a J-hook pattern on Capri. Somebody was asking today, should we get rid of Capri? 
No, you're in a J-hook pattern. Let the pattern now tell you uh, what you want to be doing. And some of the energy stocks, a lot of the energy stocks are doing J-hook type patterns. Bloom Energy. What do we got going here? A J-hook pattern. What should we be looking for? If this opens positive with a potential of a uh, doji sandwich breakout of a J-hook pattern, that becomes a very good, strong entry. Even if you're a day trader, you know the probabilities are that if it opens positive, it's going to trade positive after a doji. And we know what the potential magnitude of the next move is, this candle right here. So we're seeing a lot of the energy stocks producing J-hook patterns. Occidental, even more compelling, because it did a bullish engulfing right smack dab off the 200 and back up through the T-line. Uh, this one, you can buy if it comes back up through the, uh, through up, up, well, goofed it up, up through today's high. Apache, same scenario. And Whiting, same scenario. These are all in good uptrends after J-hook patterns. Try to think what else we got that is working well. Kirk? Kind of your fry pan bottom breakout, J-hook pattern. Very simple trading strategy. You just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Let me see. Wampum. Wheaton Silver. That one can still be bought. Look at your kind of your island reversal. Best friend gap up. Now a morning star signal. I think you at least come up to the 200 and the 34, at least putting you in a positive direction with the potential that it could come back up to the 50. CB, don't you know to hang on to your individual ones until Jim does the double line? And let's see, still going through some of the ones that we own. Notice how ACLS, after the J-hook pattern supporting right here, has stayed above the T-line. Um, VXRT, whoops, RT. Another one, you stay long, even though it's got a little bit of dicey, but it closed right on the... Uh, on the 3T line and still above the T line in the mode of a, a J-hook type pattern. So there's nothing you can do on a day where a stock's having a bad hair day other than just, just stay long. ACUL, a nice steady eddy, however, it's doing a, did a doji harami today in the overbought area came off this J-hook pattern. So when we see this, what should we be telling ourselves? We're seeing indecision up here, a Harami, Doji. You put your safety stop right here. If this opens lower and starts trading back up, you're okay. If it starts trading back down through the low of today, after that Doji type day, that's a pretty good indication that was your sell signal. Take some profits. And IDT, kind of the same scenario. you got to assume that you're in an uptrend right now, this 45 degree. You can stay long as long as it stays in this uptrend. However, if you want to be a little bit more aggressive, another one where you'd put your stop just below today's low, because if it came back down through there, more than likely it's coming back down to the T-line, which if you're trading, you take your profits, you can always buy back in if it supports at the T-line. And WWR. 
This one held up in this kind of fry pan bottom for weeks now, except today it closed below the T-line. So with it closing below the T-line, what's the trajectory? Well, first of all, we know our simple rule, the T-line, that if you're in a fry pan bottom, you can stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T-line, which it did, number one. Number two, what's it tell you about the trajectory now? It's disappearing. So you come out, take your money, put it someplace else. You don't get rid of this because it's still got a potential of a big fry pan bottom. On the next strong buy signal, you might come right back into it, but that might not be for another week or two. You're just waiting now for that next... Uh, strong buy signal. And AVRO uh, with that big best friend gap down, all you can do on one something like this is just stay short until you see a sell signal. I'm sorry, until you see a buy signal. That's why this is so effective. And the other major short position we have is overstock with a couple of assumptions. A bearish left-right combo at a resistance level. And what's the trend? The trend's already in a downtrend. What's that imply? It usually implies that the further you are, or the, that if you're in a downtrend, when you do come up here and hit a resistance level and start selling off, the assumption is the bearish sentiment is still in progress. What's the logical target? right in here, which would also kind of coincide with hitting the 200-day moving average. All right, the biggies. You've got Tesla that's doing a J-hook pattern. So here's a perfect example of that I might not be buying here, but I'm more apt to be buying here because we can see the pattern is already setting up for the next leg to the upside. The consolidation is over. Now something like Amazon, which direction is this going? Basically going nowhere. Um, so you wouldn't be trading Amazon right now. Probably wouldn't be long or short. Netflix has a different chart pattern. You can see the fry pan bottom, kind of the bobble breakout. That one, it has the implications of going higher. And NVIDIA. Same thing, which direction is NVIDIA going? Right, nowhere. That's true. Yeah, Amazon, a big wedgie. And pretty much, you could probably do your line drawing. Like that, waiting for it to break one way or the other. And we did Netflix. All right, so here's some of the charts. Again, a lot of people always ask, what are the strongest, what is the strongest signal or pattern? And the answer is, they're all strong. There might be different time frames in a market trend that uh, uh, that's one pattern or signal works better or is more effective during a uh, uh,
certain specific market conditions. And right now, obviously, the J-hook patterns are working. And the J-hook patterns are working in the sectors that are showing good strength right now. So again, that's putting the stars all in alignment. There's a J-hook pattern on Chegg. But if this opened positive, you probably have the likelihood there's we're going to back up to fill this gap. Beam. These are kind of J-hook scoop type patterns. See the morning star signal. If this breaks up through here, another good price move, probably bringing you up into this range. ACCO. A J-hook type pattern, not one of your best. I don't know why I've got that one. Maybe I've, maybe it's the wrong one. Is it A R C O? Well, maybe not that much better. M P, a J-hook pattern with a gap up through the resistance level, implying a lot more upside. I can't believe that Washington just beat the Steelers. What a bad night. And there's another J-hook pattern setting up an SBE. One of these uh, oh, merger type firms. Fossil, kind of a scoop J-hook, broke out through this level, would tell us that there's a likelihood of wave three. Now, I don't know how they could have lost to Washington. Bally, there's that scoop type J-hook. Another one that if it comes up through this level, probably has another strong price move. And so the J-hook patterns, the reason you want to identify them, here's a potential bobble breakout. Now the reason a bobble breakout is much more uh, inclined to uh, to work is because the J-hook pattern comes back and usually uses the T-line as a support. No big deal unless you can see that the T-line is a support, which obviously means a lot of people just see this supporting. We can see it supporting right off the T-line, a little bit more visually uh, confirming. But what everybody is watching is what, they're, what prices are doing at the 50 or the 200. So if it comes up through here, we know we've got a high probability uh, breakout, bobble breakout, which means we could be buying immediately with a lot more confidence. Other people that are watching the 50, so oh, it failed before, I want to make sure it gets through. So they're going to be buying up here and up here. Uh, no, it's not necessarily a T-line crunch. Usually a T-line crunch is a consistent move. This is more, more of that uh, uh, bobble breakout setup. So the reason a bobble works more effectively is because everybody is watching to see what it does at the 50. FST, another one that if it opened positive, you've got a J-hook pattern doji sandwich breakout. And APPN, look where it pulled back to a morning star signal right smack dab on the uh, the uh, T-line, now you've got a McMuffin, which means high probability is moving higher. So some other good charts, SYRS, there's your best friend breakout. If tomorrow you can still be buying because it tells you from the best friend, which shows a lot of strength, that there is not a, uh, not any more resistance. You, this is what we're looking for, for good, strong price moves. That was the basis 
for buying this one because it broke out a fry pan bottom with a best friend signal. Uh, AJ uh, or AG, it's not that you would expect upside. No, you're still in a market that is telling you that it's specific stocks and sectors that are doing well. We're just happen to have the capabilities using candlestick uh, scanning to see which one of those sectors and stocks are doing well. So the slow uptrend is because there is still numerous sectors trading lower while other sectors are trading higher. What we're interested in is uh, finding the ones that are trading higher and, and using that uh, probability factor to not only be buying something that's in an uptrend, but in an uptrend that's going to move a heck of a lot faster than just merely uptrading or uptrending stocks. Uh, no, that's what, Bob, that's what makes the pattern. The fact that they did take it way up, pull it back, and now doing the J-hook pattern. So something that has new dynamics in it, like Kodak. This is why I always uh, kind of advise people, learn a few chart patterns and learn them so you become an expert at it. So what do you think should, uh, uh, should do with this one? Well, if it started trading positive, look for a 45 degree. How long would you hold this 45 degree? Right now, I'd probably use the low of today as a stop. It shouldn't come back down through there. So knowing those simple little basic rules keeps you on a good trade or gets you back out of a trade or keeps you from getting into a bad trade. Uh, Cheryl, you still have to uh, know what each of the individual signals are telling you. Then the bobble, the best friend, the left-right combo, all of those you now advance one step further to say, all right, if I understand what each signal is telling me, now I have a better perspective of the strength of a new price move based upon the signal and something happening. So the best friend signal is still a doji, has a doji involved. Now you go one step further and say, all right, if I see a doji followed by a gap up, that's my best friend. But you still have to know the ABCs, the 12 major signals. How do candlestick analysis work for Forex pairs? Just the same way, except you're not going to have gaps because it's a, uh, because uh, it's a, a flowing uh, uh, trading. But the signals are still going to work effectively on the uh, Forex. Remember, candlestick analysis is the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. That does not exclude anything. Whether you're trading stocks, bonds, currencies, tulip bulbs, cattle, Anything that has fear and greed, candlestick analysis is going to tell you what investor sentiment is doing on each time frame. Uh, yeah, if I was buying this one on positive trading tomorrow, I'd have a stop right here. I wouldn't want to see it come back down through that, that level. And VLDR, there's your doji, little gap up doji, inverted hammer, bullish confirmation. This is where you expect a 45 degree to continue that uptrend. Groupon came back on the close, but you can still see the pattern that's setting up. So here's where you can become a little bit more aggressive because of the expectation of what this pattern should be doing. Fry pan bottom, 
Jayhook pattern. Then I pulled back. Maybe I, if I bought, I'm holding, or if I'm thinking of buying, probably still want to see it come back up through here because I'm anticipating that if this is wave one, wave three will be the same magnitude. So this does not become a bad chart. This just becomes a chart to watch to see if it's going to confirm our pattern setup. Uh, on yes, George. Um, if it came back through the low, that means there's lots of selling still going on. I want to be back out. Oh, was I pointing at the the close? I didn't mean to. Yeah, I meant to say if it comes back down through here, that if I was buying up here somewhere, wouldn't want to see it come down through there. So there's still lots of good charts out there, and this is where the uh, simple scanning techniques, notice we can assume that the 50 is acting as a support. Now they have a best friend, best friend gap up. Implies there's first target, second target uh, higher than that. Where higher than that, we don't know. That becomes where, uh, where you start looking to for the sell signal. Here is a uh, breakout. And if you can see what everybody else is probably watching, that this was a resistance level, and I think there was even another point down here that you could come up through. This is now broken out. That means there's a new dynamic. So either it's exhaustion at the top or exuberance at the top, or this is a new breakout. So you just make your plans accordingly. That's right. Do what they say, not as they point. So if I was long, I wouldn't want to see it close back below the halfway point of this candle in the overbought area. Because that tells me ah, that was just a exuberant breakout. Now there's no follow through. Time to take profits. Uh, this is observe the obvious. Came up, pulled back, drifted, drifted, drifted to when? Right smack dab on the 50-day moving average. Then what do we have? Kind of a little morning star signal. So this one you can be buying because everybody and their brother can see it supported at the 50. We can see that it did reversal signals. That becomes a fairly high probability uh, trade setup. And Land's End, I'm sorry, L Brands. Notice the pullback. This is why you want to know what your signals are telling you first. When it pulled back, was this decisive selling or indecisive selling? Obviously indecisive. Lots of dojis, little spinning tops, hammers. Not very decisive selling. That told us when they started buying again, the selling was over. Now you're looking for the next move. A doji parade. That's right. And the gold stocks are coming back. So there's ego with your best friend gap up. Now a morning star signal. Same thing with wampum. Kind of an island reversal after a little series of dojis, kind of a cradle pattern. Now we have a morning star signal. Makes this a high probability bullish move because you got buy signals, consolidation, and another buy signal. That tells us the bulls are definitely taking control. I would think some of the other ones. Yeah, you know, there's uh, Anglo Gold. Good looking chart. There's Barracks. Also a good looking chart. So you can be buying the golds. And I'm trying to think whatever other silver. Uh, 
pause, also acting well. So right now, as long as the Dow stays up above the T-line, you stay long. Now there's a little at least perception of a T-line crunch going on. Because if they keep pushing up to what we can observe as being a resistance level, and they, they stay above the T-line, and they bring the T-line right up, crunching the uh, price up through this level, that means there's still a lot of bullish energy. When it breaks out, we're in, in the next wave. Okay, so that's about all I've got for tonight. We started buying Blink again. You'll probably see that, at least this one, on the recommended list tomorrow. We started buying Very over the last couple of days because of that J-hook pattern setup. So this is why knowing what the patterns illustrate for us, the classic pattern, tells us wave one and wave three could bring you up into this range. Uh, Cheryl, that's if you're, depending on how fast you're trading it. Um, you trade it, there's your 10-minute chart. If you're day trading it, I would have been closing it out right here. If you have a little wedge, then a close below the T-line. If you're swing trading it, you're still trading up and you're still in a pattern. George, hang on to your individual ones until I tell Jim to do the double line. Okay, so with that, is there any general questions on candlesticks? What do you mean by starting, started by in half position? Well, if I'm not real sure yet, and I think something's going to work, maybe today if I was watching this and I'm saying, oh, it's trading up here, looks like it's coming up, I'm going to buy a half a position. And then if it works, I'll buy, or if it continues higher, I'll buy the other half. Because by the time I buy the other half, it might be up here. Or if it doesn't work, I've only got half a position in. Now I know what to do. If this this better open positive and trade positive to stay in it. Can you explain the most important pattern? Can you explain the most important pattern? Best friend or bobble? Cheryl, I think we just... That was the whole point of this uh, training, that there isn't one that is the absolute best in all situations. Right now, in these market conditions, the, uh, uh, the uh, J-hook pattern is working very effectively. Last month, it might have been the, the fry pan bottoms. Yeah, the J-hook is now working very well. And we're seeing that in both the fact that we're seeing J-hook and or bobble patterns. Yes, a half a position. Uh, um, who was asking about that? Peter. If I'm buying or adding to my portfolio or trading my portfolio, the thing that is the most detrimental to anybody's in tr uh, anybody's trading is their own emotions. So the way I keep my emotions out of my trading is if I've got X number of dollars, let's say I have an account of $250,000, I'm going to preset what I'm comfortable with. And that preset might be that I'm going to have 10 $25,000 positions on. And I keep each position equal dollar amount. Why is that? 
because if you look at a lot of people's portfolio that might be a, a $200,000 portfolio, they've got one position that they've got $50,000 in. They've got another that have 20,000 in, another one that has 6,000 in. Another one is 34,000. So if the $6,000 position does extremely well because of your analysis, it's not doing anything for your portfolio. If I'm used to buying $25,000 positions, that means every time I make my analysis and it's not working, I can say to myself, this unit of my portfolio is not working. If I've decided, oh man, there is a position that is absolutely wonderful, I'm going to buy 40000 instead of my normal 25000 You can bet dime to donuts that the next day I'm spending 90% of my time watching the $40,000 position and 10% of my time watching the other nine positions I might have on. And if that $40,000 position that I am so smart and have bought a lot because I know it's going to work, that if it's not working, my rationale is, oh, everybody not as smart as me can't see the reason to be buying it. I'm going to give it another day. And it keeps going down a little bit, not working. So I'm going to give it one more day to see if everybody else catches on. What I've done is now I've got that money that is not working, but because I put my ego into that trade, uh, instead of it being a unit my port of my portfolio, it's now become my favorite. And instead of selling it because that unit was not working, I've sold it too late when it moved down too much because I thought everybody else was going to catch on. That's what kills most investors' uh, profitability. That's right. Uh, Wayne, it all depends on how much time you're, you're watching. If I am buying if I was buying Blink today, and let's say I was buying it right in here, I'm watching because I'm sitting here watching. Now, if I was buying it and then I had to go off and Christmas shop or whatever, I'm going to put a stop in and say, I better not come back down through here. But if I'm sitting here watching the trade, I don't need to put it in right away. Or if I happen to see something, let's do it like this. Uh, let's, uh, let's say, here's a good example. Let's say I bought Groupon today. It opened here and started trading up. And I'm thinking, all right, I'm buying, and I'm going to put my stop back here where it opened because logic says if it comes back down through there, what's it doing? It's telling me that the sellers are taking control. I want to stop right back out. Or if I'm sitting here watching and it's trading up, trading up, and then start seeing it drift, start seeing it drift, now I might uh, jump in there and say, all right, let's put a stop at where it opened it shouldn't come back down through that level. So I don't necessarily put a stop on right away unless I'm not going to be able to sit there and uh, watch what it does all day long. I'm going to put a stop someplace where it shouldn't be trading if it's doing what we expect it to do from that, that pattern. Okay, I guess with that, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.6 seconds, do the next double line. INU. Nothing yet. If I, I wouldn't be short, but I wouldn't be long until you get bullish confirmation, which is a close above the T-line. Blink, I think I bought either the December monthlies or the December 
first calls. I think it was December 31st, and I think I bought the 28th. Uh, Occidental, either the uh, December options, which expire two weeks, or the December 31st, three weeks out. But I wouldn't buy them unless it came back up through this level. Uh, this one you can buy if it starts trading positive tomorrow. Yeah, so that would be your first target is up in this range. Boeing. Boeing is a little bit toppy. You're still in an uptrend. Where would be a logical place that would tell us the bears have definitely taken control? Oh, hold on. Let me... Spam. Yep, it was spam. I would put a stop at the close of Friday. Because if it opens and comes back down through there, they're probably coming back to test the T-line. An AFMD. Kind of a little J-hook, but big price move. You watch for exuberance. I'd have a safety stop at the halfway point of this candle. ABR, nothing to get excited about here, John. That's sideways and it's not going anywhere. If it if it didn't break out through this level tomorrow, I'd close it out and find something better. Because right now, all you're hoping for is that it trades up, but there's no direction. ADT, this was a good chart potential. I would still be a buyer of this one if it comes back up through this level. That would kind of give you a stick sandwich, which would uh, be bullish on after breaking out above the, uh, above the 50. Blue. Blue, you could buy on positive trading, but it definitely has to open positive tomorrow. And KGC, another gold stock. If you like this one, you could buy. I'd probably want to buy this one above today's high, which would make my next target the 50-day moving average. P-O-A-I. Uh, on these type of stocks, ooh, that's ugly. Oh, I... With that telling you they were failing to break out, telling you they're not really going anywhere, I'd be out of this one. Goose was a good example of knowing that if you're short, when you're in the oversold area and you have a doji and you're short, That's where your stop is. It shouldn't come back up through that level. Now you've got a big bullish engulfing. Yes, you could be buying this one on positive trading. And then just don't let it close back below the 50, which would also probably equate to the T-line tomorrow. American, you just stay long on this one. In the overbought area, I'd have my safety stop at today's open. Nothing to do here. Uh, you no, know, not really a double doji setup. A double doji setup is when you've had a move and then it kind of consolidates. This is just a steady uptrend. Um, but you stay with it. I wouldn't necessarily be a buyer here. If you're long, you stay long. S-Fix, somebody said was trading well up after hours. Oh, it was well up above 45. Well, that one you just have to watch uh, because there wouldn't have been any warning on that one. You have to see where it opens and what it does after it opens. 
NCLH, another one where if you're long, you just stay long. I wouldn't be necessarily buying these up here. Whoops, how did I do that? Wow. Suncor, another one that you want to buy if it comes up through this level. You can see where the J-hook pattern supported at the T-line and the, the 200. And remember, this is the normal reaction to human nature. Comes up through a resistance level, pulls back to the resistance level to see if it's going to act as support. And if it starts showing buying at that level, everybody and their brother sees that it's supporting at the uh, 200, so they have confidence about coming back in or, or start buying it. Draft King. Uh, this one should have been closed out yesterday. I wouldn't necessarily go short. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't go short just because of the uh, possibility of the strength right here. Now, if you shorted it, you'd have to make sure it gets through the uh, uh, gets through the fifty down through the fifty day moving average. Taste. Look for a forty five degree off of here. Natural gas fund, stay short. Kendai. Kendai didn't do anything. I guess they announced that their suspected bad accounting from China wasn't true. This one I wouldn't be long or short. Well, I'd say it shouldn't be. I wouldn't be long or short. Or if you were short, yeah, that'd be a toughie to stay short right now with it right on the 50. If it comes down through this level, telling you they aren't supporting at the 50, then you could probably be going short. But because of the the negative uh, implication of their being a China company and their accounting doesn't have any accountability, it's probably nothing that with 9,500 trading entities out there, you probably can find a lot better situations that wouldn't whipsaw you. Uh, this one you can buy if it comes up through the 50, and it's already up through the 50 or up through the 200 with kind of a little morning star signal. You can buy this one on strength. I'm telling you the uh, 200 is not acting as resistance anymore. Snow, just stay long. Have your safety stop it. Just below today's low. Under Armour. Nothing wildly exciting. If you're long, you just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. The CBOE, uh, that's kind of a T-line crunch. You could buy this one on positive trading because that would tell you everybody sees that it's not resisting at the 200 anymore. ONCT. Here's one that uh, with the gap up, Island reversal, you can buy on positive trading and just have your uh, safety stop at today's low. Defend. Ah, for some reason that just does not come up, come up here. General dynamics, slow uptrend. I'm trying to think of some of the other uh, aerospace. Yeah, they're having a hard time getting through into new territory. I don't know why this system doesn't bring up the defend. And uh, clean energy, nothing great right now. And I probably wouldn't pay attention until it breaks this downtrending channel. So wouldn't buy it until it breaks out through this level. Yield, nothing. You can see that it's sideways, and even when it got up through... Uh, even with a T-line crunch, they brought it back down. If this opened lower, I'd close it out because it's not going anywhere. It needs to come back up through this level to have any energy. Zoom, nothing. No direction. Whoops. LMND. You stay long, have your safety stop at today's low. It shouldn't come back 
through that level. Trade desk, just a slow, steady eddy. You just stay long. Tesla, we did Tesla. Tesla's got a J-hook pattern. You can go long if you want to, yes. Oh. Would you set your stop at the end of the day to protect yourself on the open? Oh, uh, if you're Jace, if you're sitting here, you're going to see what's going to happen on the open. So you can make your decision right away. If you're not able to sit and watch, yeah, you put a stop in for the next day that it shouldn't come back down through that, a specific level. That would not be... Yeah, that would be telling you it was in the wrong direction. An NVTA, kind of a, not so much a J-hook as it is a fry pan bottom. CYH might be starting back up. You can see there's kind of a wedge. This one you could buy on positive trading, giving you a doji sandwich breakout of this, kind of this downtrend. Uh, Coop, another one where there's not any real great enthusiasm in it. You could get ready to buy this one on positive trading, but you'd probably want to see some convincing positive trading to illustrate that this is a J-hook pattern. You can use trailing stops, yes. And I usually used trailing stops once you get into an overbought situation. And a lot of times, if it's trading here in the overbought area, I'll put a stop right here if it came back down through that, that level. Or I may put a stop that says close it if it uh, closes below that level. Uh, yes, you can see the big move and a lack of uh, bullish enthusiasm. Still lack of bullish enthusiasm. And then it closed back below this level. That's just not a good chart. That's kind of the same reasoning over here. The reason we kept the puts is that after trading way up here, it traded back down here, still in this downtrend. So it's still not a, a good bullish chart. Uh, this one doesn't come up. Base, well, you're starting to see exuberance, but that's what you expect coming out of this fry pan bottom. You stay long, but I'd have a safety stop. I wouldn't want to see it close back below the halfway point of this candle. Uh, you can look for a 45 degree off of CNST. Advanced micro, you still got a slow uptrend, and the uh, primary word there is slow. But if you're long, you just stay long. Where can I load the new app? Uh, Joe, you got me. I don't know what the app is. Okay. I'm sure we'll have access to the new app here pretty soon. NIO, nothing yet here. I don't know where all these lines came from. Nothing yet.
This one's a nice fry pan bottom breakout. Just be aware of the magnitude of your return. But if you like this, you could be buying it. And there was another one. Oh, L-I. Nothing there yet. Uh, you don't know whether it is yet or not. Now, you do know that it's supporting on the T-line, so you need a little bit more, uh, uh, little bit more evidence. So you could be buying it on positive trading and then use the T-line as you stop. Uh, I would stay with this, but you definitely want to see that, that it's going to support on the T-line, which means... Uh, um, Uh, so you want to see positive trading. Jace, I don't know what your first part of your statement or question was. GM, haven't we done space three times now? If a stock requires positive trading the next day, why don't we just enter a conditional order to be filled at a specific price the previous good because you might have something that looks like this where if you're saying buy this above a certain price and it opens up here and does this you may have bought it here and you'd be not in a good situation you want to see what it does after it opens into it not a very exciting percentage mover but it's moving in this direction is it on the webinar launch page about stops over the weekend about stops over the weekend i still don't know the question You can always put a stop loss in any time, good till canceled. I'm still short OS, yeah, OSTK because of this and because of this. We still haven't closed above the T-line, stochastic's heading down. I'm suspecting we're coming back down toward the 200-day moving average. T2. Uh, Don, there's nothing exciting about that stock at all. For long term, I have no idea. I wouldn't be trading this long or short. If it's just for Myra long term, it you want to definitely see this open positive confirming your inverted hammer signal. Game stop. Yeah, you're still above the T-line, but you're not getting the enthusiasm that you should. So I would, if I was long this one, I would definitely want it to come back up through today's open and prefer, preferably higher to show a J-hook pattern. If it opened flat or traded lower, I'd eventually close it out and find something better. Oh, earnings tomorrow. All right. What time do you wait to begin placing orders in the morning after the market opens? Do you tend to place buys before the close or after the market opens? Usually after the market opens because I want to see the ones that I've looked at to see how they're opening to make sure they're opening properly. Then... If they're opening properly, I want to see that there's continued buying. I don't want to see them open and immediately start selling off. That tells me the buyers aren't there yet. So when we do, we can do an entry strategy 
uh, session uh, some night soon. And I think we've got scheduled for a night for members on Wednesday night. We might, if that's all right, we might do the entry strategies uh, to show when to get into a trade and when not to get into a trade. With a trade desk, 12, 11, 8, 50, 8, 40, put spread be a viable trade. Uh, Wednesday, yes, would be for just members only. Thursday is just our general session. Bill, I guess the rhetorical question is, what makes you think you'd want to be putting on a put spread? Is there any selling appearing in trade desk? A credit spread. So you're going to be selling the spread. Yeah, I would be more apt to be selling a spread. Yeah, I, I would do a credit spread. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing it that I would anticipate. So if there's some money right now in that uh, spread, yeah, wouldn't be wouldn't be afraid to do that. Okay. Whoops. Blink is a, a very viable chart. I would think even very is still pretty viable because of these classic patterns. Okay. Well, it's not bad. It's just not confirming yet. So where would you buy this one? Either at today's open or today's high. If it comes up through there, it's telling us they aren't, aren't uh, coming back down through the T-line. When you do the trade entry class, will you talk about time frames? You watch for entry and what proper opening looks like for a stock you would trade. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what we do, all the aspects of uh, uh, how the market's opening, how the stock's opening, and then a combination of if the market is opening lower, or let's say, let's put it this way, if the market's opening higher and your stock that you're looking to buy is opening lower, but the market's still doing what it's supposed to, and it, you would anticipate there would be buying, then you flip to your 10-minute chart and watch to see what happens off the 10-minute chart, that if it starts trading positive and comes up through the previous day's close, that's when you can be buying. So those are all elements of when to get into a trade properly. CVM, yeah, look for a 45 degree. Yeah, nothing... Uh, 34 cents after the market uh, doesn't really mean all that much. The T-line is the 8 exponential move in average. That is the most effective indicator to be used in conjunction with candlestick signals. Because the logic is that if candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of investor sentiment and the T-line acts as a natural support and resistance level of human nature that when you combine those two you've got an extremely powerful uh, combination. 
dramatically improves your probabilities. Okay, with that, I've got to go in the corner and cry because the Steelers lost tonight. That's just infathomable. So with that, we'll see everybody bright and early in the chat room tomorrow. We'll see you then.